Welcome to Stories from Sight, the podcast for renovation enthusiasts. I'm Amy Donalik, and together with my co host, Jane Middlehurst, we chat with home renovators about the roller coaster that is renovation. This week, we talked to Kat, whose renovation started from a developer finished home. Kat shares her gradual process of transforming it into her dream space and the particular challenges encountered working with her contractor to get those design details right and achieve the considered look she was after. So hi, Kat. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We wondered if you wanted to give us a bit of an intro into what you've been renovating. Well, it's been a slow renovation, really, actually, because we moved in six and a half years ago. It had been done up by a developer when we moved in. So I'd love to say that we're, you know, one of these couples that came in and did all the DIY ourselves and everything but we're not. We moved into a house that had been all freshly painted and had brand new kitchens, brand new bathroom. So it was all lovely, but kind of the downside of moving into something that had already been done up was that it wasn't exactly what I would have chosen. And so it was great at the time because we had a small baby, but over the last few years, we've been able to slowly put our stamp on the place, which has been a really nice way of doing it actually, because It's only when you've lived in the house for a while that you start to realise how you need the house to work for you as well. So we did a loft conversion about three and a half years ago, which gave us a fourth bedroom, which is such a luxury to have. I've got two small children, so to have that lovely spare bedroom for when my parents come to stay, which they do a lot, and, and to have friends around is just lovely. And we've got a really large bathroom on the top floor which again is just such a luxury because before that we just had this teeny tiny bathroom for our growing family and you literally have to squeeze around the door to (laughs) to squeeze in between the bathtub and the door to get in there and so like you know when we had our daughter bathing her in there I had to sit on the toilet because there was nowhere (laughs) else to be in the room but then when my little boy came along there's just no way that all of us could have been in that little tiny bathroom. So it's lovely now. We've got this huge, huge space. And literally, we dance in that bathroom sometimes because there is that much space. But it's really nice to put the music on and just have that lovely area. But it's also great because when we've got guests, it means they've just got that top floor to themselves. They've got their own bathroom up there as well. And so, yeah, we, we finished that just about three and a half years ago. And the plan was then to extend the kitchen and we paid the deposit. I was pregnant with my son at the time. We paid the deposit to the builder and we were all set. We were going to go in about six months time. So we were going to have this semi break in between building projects. And yeah, that six months turned into about three years. So my little boy who I was pregnant with at the time that we paid the deposit, he was three by the time we started the building work, basically, because we just had so many issues with planning permission and the drawings that we had which we just went back and forth back and forth and it was just a bit of a logistical crazy nightmare but yeah in the end three years later we managed to do our kitchen extension and in a way I'm just so glad that we didn't do it three years ago because Mm. we would have done it completely differently so when we were originally planning to do it we were going to keep our existing kitchen because it it wasn't very old and I feel really awful saying that we got rid of a kitchen that was only six and a half years old but so you know three years ago we were going to keep that kitchen just extend around it but actually by the time the six years had passed the kitchen was actually starting to fall apart in different places and it just wasn't working for us it didn't have the, the storage options that we needed or the layout that we needed so yeah that extra bit of time meant that we did end up replacing the kitchen units as well and just it became a much bigger project than it was originally supposed to be but yeah it's all all worked out what do you feel like time wise you know you would have been doing a rear extension and a kitchen replacement with a small baby does it feel more manageable now or do you think it's just as hard with a toddler yeah I guess there's pros and cons because if we'd have done it three years ago it would have consumed my maternity leave and it probably would have spoiled my maternity leave because I could, you know, I wouldn't have been able to focus on my baby. I would have been, it just takes up so much of your brain space. It's unbelievable. I mean, I really, 
wasn't prepared for how much energy and time it just it was just an all-consuming nightmare having the work done in the first place but on the I guess the plus side of that would be that I wasn't in work so I would have been more available whereas in the end while I was juggling work children and a building project that was also a nightmare yeah that's intense <laughs> I'm not sure there is a perfect time to do something like this I think whenever you do it there's always going to be sacrifices but you know I, I feel like I've watched so many George Clark and grand design programs and it's such a cliche but it is true that at the time it was such a horrendous process to go through and now we're like three months down the line and I've forgotten about it all and it was all totally worth it it, it is yeah. true but there are some days when you know we didn't have a fridge for about six weeks and the the kitchen didn't have a roof on half of it I kept saying it's like a garage out there because it was just tools and rubble and everything and we were still trying to use what bits we had of the kitchen trying to keep my littlest one out of here I think what I've learned about I've, I've learned lots of things from this process <laughs> but one of the things is avoid building work in the Christmas period if you can because everything just stopped so basically from like early December everything mm -hmm. stopped because people were saying well there's no point the doors aren't going to arrive in time. The windows aren't going to arrive in time. Therefore, we can't do this. And like the knock-on effects of all those delays around Christmas. And then again, after Christmas, it just took so many weeks to pick back up that I think we lost about four, four or five weeks, really, where nothing was, that we were making no progress in that time. And the kitchen units had arrived. So we used IKEA units, but we used bespoke doors. And so, oh my gosh, I don't know if you've ever ordered an IKEA kitchen, but the amount of boxes that arrives is just something out of this world. So we no longer had a kitchen because it was a garage with, you know, no roof on half of it, no functioning appliances. We were washing dishes in the bathtub and um, we we're keeping milk in the boot of the car because at least that was the, that's like the only plus side of doing it around Christmas. At least it was cold. So we had a sort of <laughs> fridge in the boot of the car and all, and all the Ikea boxes arrived and they just took up the entirety of the downstairs floor space and even at one point we had like boxes piling up on our sofa so like the entire downstairs was out of bounds we only have like the one sort of living space and the kitchen downstairs so we would just go and pick the kids up from school or finish work in the evening and just walk straight up the stairs because you know downstairs was out of action for about five weeks and that was it was tough but yeah and all over Christmas as well where everyone else is getting snuggly and you're like exactly and actually uh, we put a Christmas tree up at the start of December just before all the boxes arrived and I was like I'm a really Christmassy person but I was just like I've never been less inclined to put a Christmas tree up we, we wouldn't have if it hadn't have been for the children because it was just like this horrible horrible space with a Christmas tree taking up even more of the space that we didn't have at the time but luckily, we escaped to my parents for Christmas. So, yeah, we definitely couldn't have done Christmas here that that year. But then this year, it will be absolutely amazing to have Christmas yeah, here. Yeah. Absolutely. So can I ask that three years, just going back a bit, you said there was some toing and throwing about the, the drawings. Do you want to kind of just unpack it a bit? Yes. So we did get planning permission really early on, but we basically just had some issues where we realized that the drawings weren't exactly what we'd asked for the drawings to be and so we'd have to go back to the council and say actually we're, we're putting a slightly amended version of of the drawings in and then that would get approved but then the builder would say actually I'm not available anymore you've got to wait another six months and by the time the six months came around unbelievably we would notice that actually there was something else in the drawings that wasn't quite as we wanted so we just had slight sort of communication issues going on and yeah you know that that waiting time for planning permission to be approved I think we were looking at I think it was like eight to twelve weeks mm. each time we put the planning permission in unbelievably we put planning permission requests in I think it was about six times in the end anyway yeah in the end we got there but it it was a really painful process and it's just one of those things that 
the builders come to give you a quote, but they say, have you got your drawings done yet? So many of them ask for drawings before they, you know, before mm. they can give you a quote, which I, now I understand because of course they can't price something up when they don't know exactly what they're building. But it's a bit chicken and egg situation where you don't know if you're going to go ahead with the building work until you know how much it's going to yeah. cost. So you don't want to start paying for an architect to do the drawings yet. But yeah, I think, I mean, the architect that we used was, I, I don't know what the sort of the technical term for it is, but, you know, he did us the drawings that went through for planning. He didn't do the sort of architect designing side of our kitchen. So again, like the pros and cons of that, we saved so much money because we didn't have any designer, you know, I, I would love to work with an architect. And if we ever do something like this again, I absolutely will, because to get that project management involvement as well mm. would have been so so helpful but we we saved an awful lot of money by not involving an architect in that side of things and I think it's worked like I look around and when it was when the kitchen was first finished I did feel wow it looks it does kind of look like an architect was involved here which makes me so happy I'm really proud of that but I think yeah if if budget is an issue for people if you really do have that clear vision of what you want if you're someone like me who's got thousands of screen grabs on your phone of beautiful houses that you've seen on Instagram <laughs> you're constantly looking at houses and you can you can visualize what you want then it is quite a, a good way to save money but yeah, yeah if yeah. you've got loads of money get the architects because <laughs> yeah they, I'm sure they're worth, worth their weight in gold in terms of looking after project management as well yeah but I think you're right I think it just highlights that someone has to do that work and if you haven't got an architect on board it means that you're doing that work and actually just that's that's totally fine and good if you know that that's what's going to happen I think sometimes it catches people out that it's like oh gosh I've got so many decisions to make and it's really overwhelming and then I've got to organize that and make it all happen like that's yeah. That's challenging, which <laughs> is yeah. great if you're up for it. But I think um, it can be a really a big, big juggle. So one of the sort of horror stories from our <laughs> kitchen extension was, I think, you know, if, if there had been that architect, this wouldn't have happened. But we had an issue where the builders put the side return roof, so the pitched roof down the side of the kitchen, on at the wrong height. So they spent like you know 10 days putting the roof on and the the window guy came to have a look at fitting the windows and said this pitch is like virtually flat you're gonna have loads of water coming in here this can't be right and we were we were totally confused and then we had a look at the plans and we thought yeah what is going on here they've gone about a meter too low on the highest point of that pitch roof and so that was like the lowest weekend of the whole building project because we suddenly realized that the last 10 days had all been wasted and Ooh. we were going to need to ask our builders to sort it out. And we had a real dilemma of, oh, shall we just live with it as it is? Because for ease and for not wanting to like cause any conflict with the builders. And then we just realized, no, we're spending a lot of money. Of course, we don't want a roof lower than it's supposed to be. Of course, we want like the higher the ceiling, the better. And just for the sake of, you know, maybe an extra couple of weeks of pain, it's going to be worth it in the long term. And absolutely, it was, the, it was the right thing to do. But at the time, we really considered, shall we just live with it like it is? So, yeah, then they had to spend like the next 10 days taking all the roof back down again. And then the next 10 days after that, building it again. So, yeah, and that was just a total mix up on communications, which I think had there have been a proper project manager or architect, I can't see that that would have happened. And then one of the other issues that I had was that the builder was very, very, very good, really diligent, knew what he was doing, took a lot of pride in his work, but he wasn't sort of design minded. And again, like, I think if you go for a, those sort of building companies that offer more of that design aspect, you're going to have to pay a lot more money for that sort of thing. So we were on a pretty tight budget to do the kind of project that we were doing but I had this vision for the type of skylights that I wanted so I'd seen it you know on all these lovely Instagram accounts where people have like a window and then a beam and then a window and then a beam it, it sort of looks like that lovely row of kind of like unbroken 
glass with only the beams in between them. And I realized at the last minute before I ordered my glass, which was like due to be fitted in like four days or something, I realized that the glass that I was buying had to have like, I think it was like close to a meter of, of space in between them. And I, and I was saying to my builder, oh no, I wanted my glass to be sort of really, really close together. So, and he didn't know what I meant. And I was just showing him pictures from Instagram going, look like these people's windows. And he's going, <laughs> yeah, that's great. But I don't know how they've done that. So luckily I use, I don't know if you know the Facebook group, House, House Talk by House Folk, which is a, a really fantastic Facebook group for anybody who loves houses. I mean, it's probably the only reason that I still use Facebook is you get loads of lovely inspiration on there and people are really helpful. So during my renovation, I would turn to that group so many times to say, help, I need some advice. Has anyone seen this or that? So I said, what is the secret to how these windows are so close together? I can't seem to find anyone who knows what to do. And then anyway, somebody recommended me the type of windows that I would need. I don't think it was exactly like the types that I'd seen before because actually what I've now got is essentially like four windows completely joined together and just broken up by a small slither of aluminium and I thought well that's great that works they're nice and close and then I can just put the beams in between them breaking that up but actually when I when we had the windows put in I thought oh these are actually quite wow in their own right we didn't end up putting the beams in in the end so that kind of worked out for the best but yeah all those difficulties that you just don't realize when you see these lovely pictures online it's just all that stuff and you're not a builder. So I didn't realize that this was a certain type of window, you know, and it's yeah. that it's that sort of thing that an architect could really have helped out with, I think. And I think often the client, you're paying so much money to the builder to get this thing, but it, it does feel really difficult to advocate for yourself in the process because you, you need it to carry on and have this momentum. And I think sometimes having that third party it's just really helpful because obviously it's your home, it's emotional. And having someone who can kind of just bridge the parties, it can be really helpful. Yeah, that is a really interesting thing because although I had a good relationship with my builders, but, but equally I found myself treading on eggshells a lot with them because I, because I had that clear vision of what I wanted and I had these three burly blokes like almost eye rolling some of the time when I'm saying oh yeah but I don't want that because I, I want the windows here and they're like well it doesn't matter whether the windows are here or down here and I'm like well, it, it does to me and I kind of was conscious of being like renovation equivalent of a bridezilla of not wanting to just sound spoilt sometimes by saying no I, I really want it here and it's really important that it's symmetrical or whatever it was when they just want to get the job done and they didn't have they didn't see why because they weren't design minded you know and so yeah. and you just I was genuinely very conscious of don't sound spoiled don't upset them don't annoy them because actually it's a quite you know the, the power balance really lies with them <laughs> if you do upset yeah. them then they might not come back tomorrow and then you've got to live with a garage out of your kitchen for until you can get your next builder I mean luckily there never was any any problems like that but I was really mindful of it yeah it adds a lot of pressure doesn't it I feel like the type of architect that you had we would call a permissions architect which is like they get your permissions for you they m make sure you know that they've ticked all the boxes in terms of what absolutely has to be done but there's a whole nother piece of work which you know that's the next stage in technical design which is finding those windows and drawing the exact details of how your roof lights are going to meet the wall and where these beams are and things and I guess that's a big job in itself to sit down at a computer and, and draw all that out but at least you have the tools and the facilities to do it but you were actually trying to do that verbally and that's hard that's a hard thing to try and do and you know kudos to you that you've pushed that through and managed to make that happen but it's an it's an absolutely an uphill battle because you know you're trying to communicate something that is a very technical and visual thing without any drawings so you are it, it will be really hard and because again you don't have the language and the 
technical aspect to like, actually say the thing that you want as well. That makes it double hard. Absolutely. It, it did feel like we were talking different languages a lot of the time. So they would try to explain to me why something couldn't go where I wanted it to go. But they would use, like, they'd say like, oh, you can't do that because you need a 16. I'm like, what's a 16? A 16 by 16. What's a 16 by 16? Oh, you know, 16 mil. 16 mil what? And then it, I materialize they're talking about you know, a timber or a steel and they're talking about the dimensions of the steel that needs to go there. But instead of saying you're going to have a steel here, they'd say to me, you're going to have a, you're going to have a 32 there. Like, oh, what? <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I just couldn't visualize it. And all I'm saying is, yeah, but I want it to look like this Instagram picture. <laughs> yeah. So but I mean, yeah. even as an architect to try, if we were stood on site trying to piece all the different pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together in your head, you know, like, okay, so the steel's going to be here, then that's going to go on there. And that's like, it's really hard. So I just think you've done an amazing job. I guess you were having to be there, I'm imagining almost every day, were you, to talk them through those finer details? Yeah. I mean, luckily I work from home, so I was able to pop down between my meetings and I was there if they needed to ask questions. So I think, gosh, I, I did think to myself, pre-COVID, pre-working from home, how could we possibly have got this done? Mm. And there would have been so many more mistakes because I would come down and say, oh, no, no, not there. Or they would yes. say, oh, we've just thought, do you want this or that? Yeah. Oh, gosh, it's bringing back all these. Sorry. Sort of, I'd forgotten about all this. And it, it's amazing because I think we've now been finished for about three months and that the building work went on for about four months. But it feels like it's been no time at all that we've been living here and it still feels like the building work went on for so much longer but actually we're nearly at that point where we've lived in it for as long as it went on for but it doesn't feel like that yet. It's also interesting about the eye rolling I think we've definitely experienced that you know even in the architect's role when we were wearing that hat the kind of like here she goes again kind of mentality and it's like interesting, I mean, especially if you're the client, you are, you've paid for a product that someone's building for you. It's just like an interesting thing that I just don't think in any other industry, there would be such a reluctance to engage with the person who's like paying for the thing. Do you know what I mean? It's just, but it's, it happens all the time. Absolutely. And I, and, I, and I don't want to do the builders down because we did have a good relationship and they did do a lovely job for us, but also... My mum came a few times during the build and she would comment on, hmm, I'm not sure that they would talk to Toby the way that they've just been talking to you and that sort of thing. But yeah, there was definitely that tension, which, and I would think to myself sometimes, but hang on, you're, you're here to do what I'm asking you to do. That is your job is to build what I'm asking you to build. So why is it such a problem when I'm asking you to do it the way I'm wanting you to do it? Because that's the deal. <laughs> that is what we've si or both signed up to here is for you to do my job for me please but yeah and then, and then the other thing is that Toby my partner really didn't have a clue what this kitchen was going to be like I mean he was absolutely not involved in this project at all I think he just he wants an easy life he didn't care enough about having a bigger kitchen to go through the work so the deal was kind of fine well we can do it but I, I, I don't really want any part in this so he would just he would just let me crack on and I you know I was the one with the vision but it would be funny that some days he I'd hear him saying something to the builder and I'm like no 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 Toby that's not what we're doing we're having this here we're having that here so it was lovely to to be able to just do what I wanted to do and not didn't have to compromise yes. with him in any way but also probably like another difficulty was that I took it all on mm. I, I did it completely by myself really but he loves it. He loves it now. And Obviously. he knows that he knows that he knows that I was right. It was totally worth it. You've delivered. You've absolutely yeah. over delivered on your extra space. You've got a beautiful kitchen. And those extra details that you've really pushed hard for, they do make all the difference. It does elevate the space to being beautiful as well as functional. And I guess you enjoy that every day because you know that you created that. Yeah, thank you. That That's so lovely to hear. It means a lot that someone else would say that because that's exactly what I hope that someone would say at the end of it. It makes it all totally worthwhile. Well, thank you so much. It's been lovely to chat with you and hear about your project. 
And if you would like to see pictures of Kat's project, including her beautiful roof lights and plywood kitchen, do head to our website at homenote.co forward slash stories from site.